Hello and welcome to another Wine Word Italy review. Today I'm looking at two wines, these two here from Todeschini, who is a producer in the Val Zaccona within the Breganza DOC area of the Veneto, not far from Vicenza. Let's just check that on the map so we know where we are. Okay, here is the very top of Lake Garda. Here is Trento. Down here is Vicenza, which is probably best known for the Palladian Villas. And not so far from Vicenza, there we are, is uh, Fara Vicentino, and that's the comune in which um, Todeschini produces. So that's where we are. Up in the Veneto, nearly into Trentino. Okay, so the valley, let's think about that, where their eight wines is handcrafted, eight wines, okay, uh, had been more or less abandoned. And it's only through the efforts of three generations of the Todeschini family, beginning with grandfather Arturo after the end of the Second World War, and then Giuliano with his wife Miralda, and their two sons, Giorgio and Cristiano, that this area has been put firmly back on the wine map of Italy. So without any further ado, let's get straight on with the reviews. First of all, this one here. It is Gold Valzac, okay, which is uh, a local name for Valzacona, and it is a Vespaiolo Spumante Millesimato Breganza DOC 2010 Extra Dry. Okay, from the look of the bottle, it looks a bit like a Prosecco, but I'm told it's something rather special and rather different. Right, now what about the, uh, the grape, Vespaiolo? Let's think about that for a minute or two. 100% Vespaiolo. This one is a native Italian white grape, uh, planted primarily in Veneto, but not only. The grapes ripen to high sugar levels and are so often used to produce sweet, that is, passitoed wines uh, with a characteristic golden colour. Now, if you see these around, these are often labelled as Torcolato uh, if they come from the Veganza DOC area. But, in fact, the grapes of the Vespaiola get so concentrated with sugar that that's where the name comes from. Okay, the sugars attract wasps as the fruit ripen. Wasp in Italian is Vespa, hence the name Vespaiolo. Uh, there's another varietal in Italy with a very similar sounding name, but this produces red, uh, red wine. It's Vespolina. Not related at all, so don't confuse the two. But there it is, Vespaiola Spumante. Let's get it open, um, and I'll tell you a little bit about the harvest and so on. Okay, the grapes are selectively harvested by hand, as in so many producers, into small crates to prevent damage to the grapes before they arrive in the cantina. And then they are gently pressed. They're refined for three months on fine leaves in stainless steel vats. And then there's a secondary fermentation in uh, an autoclave, a pressurised vat, for over four months. Now, this particular spumante, as I said, is a millesimato. There it is. It has a date on the back. There we go, 2010. Now, often, um, this isn't the case with spumantes. A spumante is often made from grapes of more than one season, and therefore it cannot get a uh, vintage and anata a year printed on there. But this one, grapes all from one year, one crop. So let's pop it open and get some in the glass. Absolutely splendid pop. And you can probably see the vapour coming out there a little bit. Let's pop some in here. The fermentation, incidentally, is all natural. Yes, it's in pressure. But nothing is added. There's no gas pumped into this, unlike with your fizzy drink. The results of that natural process are immediately seen in the product. There we are. Look at the colour there. It's a very light straw yellow. Not a greenish hint. We've got some steaming on the glass because I have ser served it very cold. It's been in the fridge overnight. Recommended temperature is about 8 degrees. But the bubbles there. Let's clear the glass a second. Oops. Clear the glass a second. Okay. 
bubbles coming from all parts of the glass and they're very fine and continuing very nicely there with a small amount of foam on the top. A good sign. Okay, so there it is, there's the colour, there's the bubbles. Let's have a sniff and see what it's all about. Oh, delightful. Um, it's, it's, it smells like it did between the fields here, between the hedgerows about, uh, about a month ago when we had uh, the meadow sweep was coming, the white summer flowers, the, uh, the elder was in flower. It's almost finished now. So we've got those other early summer white flowers coming out there. Very, very pleasant. And a, and a Granny Smith sensation as well. If we don't know what a Granny Smith is, well, uh, it's a green apple. And that's the... Certainly the sort of background there is very, very green apple-y. Wonderful sensation. Very fresh smelling. Chin Chin, let's give it a taste. I believe I'm in for a treat, so uh, let's see. Well, extra dry. It certainly is, but because of this particular variety of grape, um, it's not as cutting as, uh, as a Prosecco. Uh, there's a very pleasant sweetness in there as well. The acidity, okay, it's there, the dryness is there, but uh, the, uh, the, the flowery taste comes through as well as the, just in the nose. It is pleasantly surprising. It's a very unusual balance between the dry and the sweet. Well, well, well. Another another first for Wine Word Italy. Vespaiola. Okay. So, imagine I'm not sitting here alone. In company. Early evening, warm summer evening. Ideal as an aperitivo. Or, with some sweet or savoury snacks. And uh, would probably also go with a starter or perhaps a fish dish. Now this is a sparkling variety, it's the Spumante. I have heard tell that the Vespaiolo still version uh, goes very well with eel. Now eel is a very particular dish, it's very strong tasting, oily kind of dish and not many wines go with it. I reviewed some while ago a um, Bosco Aliceo Fortana which went perfectly with it and I'm told that the still version produced from this grape the Vespaiola will do an equally good job. So there we are. But anyway, for now, here it is. The uh, Briganze DOC Vespaiola Spumante, Millesimato 2010, extra dry from Todeschini. It's dry with hints of sweetness. Uh, it's very difficult to explain. An altogether interesting experience and uh, one I would recommend. Chin Chin. And wine number two, as I said, is this from, again from Todeschini. It is their Follo, which is a Veneto IGT Bianco 2010. This one, a careful blend of three varieties Todeschini's own grown Chardonnay. Pinot Bianco and Sauvignon grapes. Again, harvesting is manual and uh, into, into small crates and gentle pressing follows. Again, this one has been in the fridge but it's been out for about an hour to try and get the temperature about right. It says 12 to 14 degrees and that's uh, probably where we are. Still enough to put a bit of misting on the glass but nowhere near as cool as the Spumante was. Okay, let's get some in the glass and see what this one is about. Slightly gentler colour for a start. Let's have a look at that. Rather a breezy day. We had a stormy night, so uh, any disturbances from the wind, well, and rather beyond my control. Okay, there it is. It's a very pale, 
straw yellow, maybe a hint of green there, but uh, not a great deal. Very, very clear. Let's see what this one does to the nose. Oh, flowery. Once again, not quite so uh, floral as the uh, the spumante was. Not so many white flowers, possibly. Maybe a, a lighter kind of flower, um, lighter flower scent. Not as strong. Certainly, what else? The fruity grapiness there, the uh, possibly the typical Sauvignon suggestion. And there's a slight bitterness in the background, a bit of sweet, kind of almondy, almondy edge there too. At the end of the nose. Right, very, very pleasant. Let's give it a taste. And uh, let's think about what's going on in here. Chin chin. Okay, it's um, fruity. The flavour spreads around your mouth quite pleasantly, but uh, it's relatively light. It's the possibly I've drunk it too soon after the uh, the spumante, which had this very very particular flavour. This is much much lighter taste. Although there's a slightly higher alcoholic content, it comes in at about twelve and a half percent not unpleasant at all. There's no alcohol suggestion there in the taste. It's possibly something you could you could drink several glasses of and uh, then be looking up at the underside of the table uh, before you realise what had happened. It's certainly very, very drinkable indeed. It's smooth. Deceptively light, I think we would call the, the taste there. Very clean taste. Very light, very clean, very pleasant. Um, something which would go very nicely with grilled fish. Or just on its own, on the terrace, on a Sunday evening or a Sunday afternoon as an aperitif. So, two wines, one producer. Once again, to sum up, there it is, the Braganza DOC Vespaiolo Spumante Melisimato 2010 X. Extra dry, a very long title. Oh, and don't forget the name, Valzac. That's the one to look for. Very interesting. Uh, good mix between acidity and sweetness. Surprising flavour. Um, would go very well with uh, as an aperitivo or with snacks, or certainly alongside uh, a light fish dish. This one, on the other hand, a more delicate flavour. There, uh, Follo Veneto Bianco, the uh, IGT. There it is, 12.5% volume. Surprisingly alcoholic, I think you would find this. Very, very easy to drink. Uh, perfect with grilled fish or alone as an aperitivo. I'm Winewood Italy. I've enjoyed reviewing these two wines from Todeschini. I hope you have enjoyed watching, and uh, I'll see you as soon on Winewood Italy. Chin chin.